What's up guys, Sky Kevin here, and today I'm going to talk about the history of the rise and subsequent downfall of Atlas. There's over a year of events that unfold in this video, so leave a comment if there's any important ones that I missed out on. I'd appreciate it if you subscribed, as I'm always making more videos like this on MMOs, and it lets me know you want to see more of this kind of content. So, let's get started. December of 2018 was a hectic year for Grapeshot Games. It was their first year. They were a new splintered off group made of members of Wildcard, the game that made Ark Survival Evolved, and had a big new idea in the books, Atlas. It was going to be a highly anticipated release with a massive amount of hype. Large streamers and previous fans of Ark were aware that a new pirate MMO with massive battles were promised with an incredible naval combat experience. Unfortunately, the game's stability at launch was not where it needed to be after they extended the release date three times to December 22nd. I believe they did this to still capitalize on the winter holiday market despite the rush job that they had done. The extension of deadlines and constant late promises would become a reoccurring theme for the rest of Atlas's history. Release Day When the game was released, Atlas had some very apparent problems from the first moments the servers came online. To start, the first day did have the usual server errors that most MMOs have. Players spamming the login to official servers would often be disconnected and have long wait queues to get in, which would be a very large issue. This is a usual problem for any new MMO, but on top of that, the free ports where new players spawn and the location in which they spawned on the map was completely full and in the center of the ocean. Yeah. I'm in the ocean it's again. Bruh! Yeah. I'm swimming back. Maybe I can find your dead ass body and we'll be chilling. How can your game be this bad? How? I, I come on, dude. With naked players starting the game, with their first experience being eaten by sharks, this quickly led to an exodus of many of the new players within the first week of the game releasing. Furthermore. The game remained nearly unplayable for the next five to seven days afterwards, as there was a large bug stopping trees and other resources from even spawning on islands. There were also a few other balance factors that were involved here. Things like ghost ships that would often attack boats being constructed in harbors deleted a lot of the progression for many of the new players, and so it was even difficult to build your first ship to get out on the ocean. Once they did get out onto the ocean, all the ghost ships that were out there spawned was so numerously and with such a large aggro radius. Travel between islands was very difficult and a lot of new players ended up getting sunk right away. This was eventually fixed a week or two into the game's release, but the damage had definitely been done. Atlas's player numbers have already been cut in half within the first week simply from all of these simple bugs occurring. Season 1 this season was wrought with boats using a large cannon meta. At first, the meta was Briggs, until the resource cost for galleons was reduced. From then on, many galleons would roll out with large cannons and play a cat and mouse style of running and gunning against multiple enemy ships. Perhaps the reason why many players say this season was known as the golden age of ship combat. The capture system was very different as well. Players could put flags down to capture specific areas and everything on them on an island, allowing for a tax rate to be set in that area and specific build rights for other companies. Unfortunately, this led to a very toxic style of control in which mega alliances would expand their area of influence to multiple islands and demolish or capture any type of building on them. There was no incentive for tax tribes, and so it eventually led to everyone looking to take over the globe with no regard for smaller groups. Any companies looking to build a base on these areas was quickly destroyed by the controlling faction. This was so that they could eliminate any chance of building up and players attempting to capture that area for themselves. Unfortunately, during this time, a very infamous group named Black Butterfly had found a way to access an admin account and began spawning in things like whales, planes, and even tanks into the game. What the hell was that? <laughs> oh, what, 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 I don't know what just happened. What, why whales? There's whales everywhere. They spawned whales. 
During this time, while trying to do optimization updates, they also had some pretty crazy bugs, like in one patch, accidentally making ghost ships shoot like a rapid fire machine gun, sinking many player ships. Nap, nap, this one's just gonna whip. What the hell? Keep the turn, keep the turn. We're taking a hard volley. Get us out of here. All of this caused more duping exploits and caused the economy and balance to become tainted within the game. Many of the game's largest streamers, like Burke Black, decided it was time to quit the game after being fed up with the amount of hackers and exploits aimed to directly troll and grief his streams. The devs, hoping to rectify this with a new content update in the works, decided three months in to introduce new capturing mechanics and many different bug fixes and balance changes, as well as a clean wipe to avoid any unfair advantages those cheaters would have had. Ironically, another misstep by the developers was to announce the game was wiping far too early, around one month before it was planned. This immediately killed nearly the entire player base for the official servers, as people didn't care about anything because it was all going to disappear in time. The season itself ended with a player-hosted event called the Kraken Bowl. This was a final hurrah for everyone to bring their ships to the center maw of the map and have one big last surviving ship showdown for a $100 gift card. It was the largest player organized event the game had ever had and would likely ever see again. Season 2 On April 11th, the new wipe and mega update took place. This season marked a turning point in Atlas's life. The player base was already bleeding out, but the development team had hoped this would fix many of the major toxicity issues and introduce a whole new level of gameplay with a brand new claiming and taxation system, as well as balancing and upgrades for boats. The overall change though was met with mixed feelings. Many people did enjoy the changes, but found the developers could not make up their mind on a single constant decision. They often flip-flopped their decision to have things like flag height limits on islands, and the balance changes would be in place for a day or two only to be reverted back the next. Additionally, the new underwater update would be the team's big update introducing tons of new content for the game's veterans. Unfortunately, this underwater update, although good looking and very well designed, really only introduced the ability to tame one new creature and to use a submarine, which ideally would have been used to explore the depths and safety. This kind of content was very specific and often only ever used by about 5% of the game's overall population and for a very short period of time. Not only that, but this content, like the submarines, introduced more kinds of griefing that would be used in the game in the future. Aside from that update, duping was still running rampant, and there were still many game-breaking bugs introduced. Eventually, the developers started to look at adding content like the 2.0 Mega Update and the Blackwood Update. The 2.0 Update introduced a new dungeon, the Ice Caves, as well as a few skins, abilities, and some biome changes. Probably the most notable thing that they added were torpedoes. Torpedoes, upon release, were, although expensive, so broken, every ship that had any inherent value to players was permanently stuck into their harbors, as the risk to take it out was so high that any other ship would be able to sink them with one or two shots from a very far distance away. This stayed that way for roughly a month, while the players waited for the developers to finally rebalance the insane amounts of damage that this weapon did. The Blackwood map, possibly even a bigger blunder from that update, was essentially a completely separate map to be used by players on unofficial or privately hosted servers. The ability to play the game in single player mode was also added. They gave that form things like roaming pirate encampments, which were also introduced. If you're wondering whether any of these updates made it to the actual main servers, the answer is regrettably no, not even a tiny bit. This update came out the very last day of July, two weeks after its scheduled release date, and did absolutely absolutely nothing for the main MMO-oriented players on the official servers of Atlas. Really all it did was add a small buffer to the smaller run private servers which only house around 20% of the game's population, as well as the single player population itself. This season, with the extreme lack of updates to official servers, bled the entire player population further and further. As all the developers' time was spent with Blackwood bug fixes and very little new content for the official servers, this would lead to large areas of control and influence as smaller groups would quit or be merged and larger giant collectives would reign supreme. This season progressed to the point where eventually there were two large alliances fighting it out, at least on the North American server. The end of this season would not be until September, as there were
were no new large updates to the game, at least on the official servers, since May, and the player base would continue to decline, and the communication from Grapeshot community managers Jat and Dolly would become more and more sparse. It wasn't until August 30th that the new Atlas roadmap would be introduced. In it, included a Hail Mary plan to introduce Eric Wananun as the new lead developer of Atlas, and a breakdown of where they wanted to take the game further with future development. This guy. Yeah, hi everyone, my name is Eric Wananun. I'm the new lead game designer on Atlas. I was previously at Arena Network and on Guild Wars 2 for several years on several different teams. Really excited to be here today and I'm looking forward to bringing a fresh perspective to Atlas and our future development. Additionally, to this regard, they also announced that Atlas would be available on the Xbox platform, inviting a brand new player base to the game. This time, luckily the devs learned their lesson from their past mistake, and announced the new wipe would be coming a week in advance to integrate the addition of the new Xbox players. Season 3 at the beginning of October, the third season for Atlas began. In it, they introduced a new player base to the game, but only content in the form of a small balancing change here or there. Overall, at this point, there hadn't been any large content updates to the official game servers since May. By now, the player base had realized that all of the developers from Grapeshot Games had been pulled over to work on the new Arc Genesis expansion, which belonged to Studio Wildcard. And even the supposed community managers, Jat and Dolly, added Arc survival evolved tags back to their Twitter accounts and turned do not disturb permanently on in their discord for Atlas. It was from this point on, Atlas was abandoned. Months went by, with nothing new on the website. And it wasn't until the middle of February of the next year when a surprise new balancing patch was introduced. In it, there was some hope restored for the game. It was finally a very productive patch, with no new content, but very good balance changes and core gameplay changes to do with the Blueprint system. It seems finally some developer out there took the advice of the community and made some changes that were happily welcomed by the player base. For the first time in around eight months, there was finally hope once more. Unfortunately, the timing was just too late. The community managers were still essentially AFK from the game, and developers were still busy with bug fixes and patches for Arc Genesis. The final nail in the coffin was the release of Last Oasis, a new survival MMO anticipated by a lot of the remaining Atlas community, as many of the larger guilds were given closed beta access. On March 26th, Last Oasis released, and with it another huge chunk of the Atlas community, including my guild and I, decided to leave Atlas. As we left, there seemed to be one last ditch update, strangely released for Atlas on March 26th. In it, they added the ability for ballistas to fire flame bolts to burn enemy ships, as well as a few quality of life and balance changes. In that announcement, they stated something very interesting. Quote, it's been a while since our last post, and today we'd like to give you a brief update. The future of Atlas is packed full of adventure. Our plan is to continue to update the game with many patches, varying from massive new features, new items, bug fixes, balance changes, and quality of life improvements, which ironically would be the last update from the developers until the recent announcement of season four. Season four. If you haven't already, check out my previous video on the Season 4 announcement with some detail and expectations for what may or may not be coming. In one day as of recording this video, on July 3rd, they will be wiping the Atlas servers to introduce a brand new world map, and what will hopefully be the addition of some finally needed new content to the game. Interestingly, the wipe is scheduled to happen at 8pm PDT, which to me is a little bit worrisome, seeing as it seems that that would be the after hours of a developer or producer's workday. So perhaps they still don't have a dedicated team of developers to work on Atlas, and this is only a stunt to capture a few more Steam summer sales on a dead game. So far though, they have definitely started off in the right direction. For a game that hasn't received a real content update in over a year, I think the Atlas community deserves some kind of content from Grapeshot, especially for how they've been treated these past few months, being strung along and left in the dark by the developers and community managers. If this game was given regular updates, community managers that actually care, and making sure the dev team is devoted to this one game, I believe it will lead to a solid player base in the long term, wanting to stay and play the game for longer than a few weeks after the server wipe. I personally 
personally loved Atlas and spent thousands of hours playing it. So I'm although pessimistic, incredibly hopeful that the new dev team will be able to turn the game around and bring the old players back to its former glory. I'll be checking out this new season, as well as giving any updates and new videos on this and other MMOs in the future. Videos like this take a lot of research and time for me, so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.